Hello friends, this is Himanshu Jain from the Wall Street School. In the last decade or so, we have trained more than 8,000 candidates in the field of corporate finance, investment banking and valuations. We've also placed more than 3,000 students in boutique and bulge bracket investment banks and in many corporate finance profiles. Now in the comment section of our previous videos, we got specific queries from you with respect to questions on corporate finance. So in this video, we are trying to address many of the questions specifically pertaining to corporate finance such as What is corporate finance? What is the job role of a corporate finance analyst? What are the skills required to be a corporate finance analyst? The salaries that you can expect in this field? Who are the top recruiters? And many more questions like this. We'll try to address all of these questions in detail in this video. So watch it till the end. Let's get started. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, we are going to talk about corporate finance. So firstly, I'll be discussing a typical structure of a finance department of a big entity. Then we'll be talking about the principles of corporate finance. Then we'll be talking about corporate finance job roles and salaries. And then we'll be discussing what are the skill set and education you require to be in corporate finance domain. So let us start. Firstly, let us understand a typical finance department of a big organization. So a big organization's finance department. So this is finance department can be subdivided into three parts. The first one is strategy and planning. The second one is treasury department. And the third one is accounting department. There is a lots of overlap, lots of direct and direct connection between these three. But broadly, you can divide strategy, treasury and accounting. So this treasury department, this department is mainly dealing in cash. So it will forecast how much cash will be required by the firm going ahead in the future. It will remain in contact with bankers so that it can raise short term loans. It will decide on short term and long term investments. So basically dealing with cash, uh, deciding whether we need cash or not. If in the cash is, if in case the cash is sufficient, they'll make very short term investments. If in case firm needs certain cash at, at a very uh, urgent disposal, they'll raise short term loans. So this is treasury department is basically dealing with cash. Then we, let's talk about accounting department. I think very common, all of us are familiar with it. So it is basically the backward looking department. Once any transaction is done, it is recorded by this department, right? It, this department is responsible to prepare your balance sheet, cash flow statement, profit and loss account. It helps firms to comply with the accounting laws, gaps and IFRS and NDAs of the world. And they are more or less responsible for tax returns and other compliances of laws. So accounting department is generally considered monotonous and not considered hardcore finance, which we investment bankers or equity research assume them to be. But this is also finance. You cannot deny that, right? They are also dealing with money, although they are recording it once the transaction has happened. But still, it is part of finance department of a particular organization. And strategy and planning is the department, the most forward looking department. So it's the area where the most fun lies in. So it decides whether to invest in a project or not. So basically your capital budgeting decisions. Then if in case you decide to invest in a project, it will help you to finance the project. So it will uh, make decisions whether you should go for debt whether you should go for equity or you should use your internal sources. Then it will make strategies to grow profits, to grow cash flows. It will make forecast and analyze the, the, the difference between the last forecast that it has done and the actual performance. And then it will take decisions on buybacks, dividends and other things, right? So this is the, the area on which this video is going to focus. I'm not going to focus on accounting part. I'm not going to focus on treasury part. Strategy and planning is something where uh, like you will be dealing with uh, making lots of uncertain but very important decisions. And this is the area that we are going to focus in this video. 
सो लेट इज मूव एड लेट इज टॉक अबाउट प्रिंसिपल ऑफ कॉर्पोरेट फाइनेंस ओके सो बिफोर वी मूव एड लेट मी गिव यू वन ऑफ माई सीक्रेट्स सो टू अंडरस्टैंड एनी पर्टिकुलर कंसेप्ट वॉट आई डू इज आई फर्स्टली स्टार्ट टू अंडरस्टैंड वाई दिस थिंग एग्जिस्ट लाइक लेट मी गिव यू एन एग्जाम्पल इफ आई वॉन्ट टू अंडरस्टैंड कैरेक्टर ऑफ थैनोज इन एवेंजर्स मूवी सो द बेस्ट वे द वे आई वुड स्टार्ट इज आई वुड वॉन्ट टू नो वॉट इज इज एंड गोल वाई ही इज इन टू एग्जिस्टेंस राइट नाउ वॉट ही इज वॉट्स वॉट्स ही वॉन्ट टू अचीव सो इन थैनोज दैट मूवी एवेंजर्स मूवी द एंड गोल ऑफ थैनोज वॉज टू ब्रिंग बैलेंस टू द यूनिवर्स दिस गिवस मी अ वेरी गुड इंसाइट अबाउट द कैरेक्टर ऑफ दैट पर्सन सो हियर ऑल्सो इफ आई कैन अंडरस्टैंड द एंड गोल ऑफ कॉर्पोरेट फाइनेंस इट विल हेल्प मी टू अंडरस्टैंड द प्रोसेस ऑफ कॉर्पोरेट फाइनेंस सो एंड गोल ऑफ कॉर्पोरेट फाइनेंस इज वेरी फोकस्ड वेरी फोकस्ड देर इज ओनली वन एंड गोल दैट इज टू मैगजिमाइज द वेल्थ ऑफ शेयर होल्डर्स इट्स वेरी फोकस्ड सो वी कैन डिवाइड द कॉर्पोरेट फाइनेंस डिसीजन इन टू थ्री पार्ट्स द फर्स्ट वन इज कॉल्ड एज फाइनेंसिंग डिसीजन द सेकेंड वन इज कॉल्ड एज इन्वेस्टिंग डिसीजन एंड थर्ड वन इज कॉल्ड एज डिविडेंट डिसीजन सो वट इज फाइनेंसिंग डिसीजन फाइनेंसिंग डिसीजन इज बेसिकली सेंग मी चूज द फाइनेंस मिक्स दैट ब्रिंग्स डाउन ओवरऑल कॉस्ट ऑफ कैपिटल राइट दैट इज इफ यू कैन रेज मनी फ्रॉम द चीपर सोर्सेज डोंट गो फॉर एक्सपेंसिव वन सो योर इंटरनल एक्यूमलेशन दैट इज योर रिजर्व आर द चीपेस्ट वन देन डेट देन इक्विटी दिस इज कॉल्ड एज पैकिंग ऑर्डर थ्योरी दिस इज रूल ऑफ थम ऑलवेज रेज द चीपेस्ट फ्रॉम द चीपेस्ट सोर्स पॉसिबल राइट दिस इज योर फाइनेंसिंग डिसीजन वॉट इज योर इन्वेस्टिंग डिसीजन Investing decision tells that invest only in those projects that generates return higher than your hurdle rate. That is your minimum required rate of return. So, if your minimum required rate of return from any project is let's say ten percent, do not invest in a project that generates less than ten percent. Let me give you rule of thumb here also. The riskier the project is, the more the risk you are taking. higher should be your expected returns and that higher expected returns will lead to higher hurdle rate higher minimum required rate of return so only invest in those projects that generates minimum required rate of return if it's not generating it's not worth your time and dividend decision is kind of residual that is if you have raised funds you are not able to find out project that is going to generate minimum required rate of return or if you have raised fund you is you started a project maybe 5 years down the line it's not able to meet the criteria it's better to return back the money right if the project cannot generate the minimum required rate of return return the money to its original holders to the shareholders right this is dividend decision i don't have any thumb rule here so this is corporate finance in one slide now let us move ahead and let us talk about corporate finance roles and salary okay so as i said earlier in this video i am not going to talk about accounting as well as treasury in this video i am just going to focus on strategy and planning that is in essence the corporate finance department so the corporate finance department or strategy and planning could be subdivided into three parts like the roles could be divided into three parts the first one is junior analyst then senior analyst then manager so people generally join in as a junior analyst you typically work on this designation for 3 years then you get promoted to senior analyst level you typically work around 4 to 5 years on this level senior analyst then you are promoted to manager level the expected salary the junior analyst is in india is around 5 lakhs for senior analyst it is around 10 lakh for manager it is around 25 lakhs right this is my experience this manager directly reports to cfo so he is directly uh, in link with the big gun right so in my experience uh, the salary is 5 10 25 5 on average level and i have taken this data from glassdoor and it says average pay is around 7 lakh 6 and 1/2 lakhs on lower side it is around 5 lakh and on higher side it is around 27 lakh and i have very similar experience so i have not used data from multiple sources right 
Now let us move ahead and talk about the skills and education qualification that you need to be operating in strategy and planning, basically corporate finance division of your firm. So let's talk about skills first. So you should be really, really good with financial analysis. That's your core job there, right? To do financial analysis and take decisions. You should be very good with your financial analysis. You have to do financial analysis. You should be very comfortable reading cash flow, balance sheet, p and annual reports, quarterly reports, everything. So you have to be really good with nitty gritties of accounting. You have to be really good at management. You have to be really good at taxation. Why do you need taxation? When you are making plan about establishing a project or uh, bringing in some funds or taking dividend decision, you have to be very aware of the tax impact of those decisions on the business, right? So you have to be very good with taxation. Then the last skill is economics. I think this is something uh, like economic skill is something that you have to apply for taking every macro and micro decision. If you're taking a big decision for a firm, you need to apply it. Even if you're taking a small decision for a firm, maybe uh, changing your debt rate from floating to fixed rate, then you need to keep the broader picture in mind, the, fluctuate, the fluctuations of interest rates going ahead in the future. You have to be very good with economics. Then educational qualification that you need here, you could be a chartered accountant and then start working in this domain. You could be MBA finance and start working in this domain. You could be CFA that is chartered financial analyst. So these are the three typical qualifications that are preferred in corporate finance department or strategy and planning department of an organization. Can you be from any other stream and be part of this department? Yes. You could have only done your BCom or engineering for that matter, or you could have degree in economics and you can be part of this department. But generally the preferred educational qualification is CA, MBA and CFA. Hardcore finance accounting uh, qualifications, right? So that's all about corporate finance. I hope this video added value to your time. If in case you have any queries regarding this video, Feel free to reach us at thewallstreetschool.com or in the comment section below. Thank you. Bye-bye.